Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mr. Mark Antimate here, the pontiff of Japanese whiskey, your Tokyo Godfather speaking. In today's episode, I'm going to be doing a taste test over two old fashions, both from over 100 years ago, and I'm pitting them against one another to see which one comes out on top. This is not a blind taste test, but it is a taste test nonetheless. Both of these come from mine and their books. This is on the left here, The Ideal Bartender by Tom Bullock, with additional writing by me, the Centennial Edition. And over here on the right, this is Julian Anderson's book, Julian's Recipes, the Centennial Edition, also with additional writing by yours truly. Over here inside the McKellen glass, even though there's no McKellen whiskey inside of there, I'm using Maker's Mark Stave Profile number 46 in both, but it is a McKellen glass nonetheless. The McKellen glass drink is going to be representative of Tom Bullock's Old Fashioned, and the Kitten Japanese whiskey glass on the right is holding Mr. Julian Anderson's Old Fashioned drink. Both of these books in hardcover, you can get them on Amazon.com worldwide, available now. So, let me put these down and take a glance over at my iPad. As I already have the tasting, how to, the recipe, the making of how to make these drinks up on the screen as it is now. And I'm going to go ahead and read the ingredients Obviously, there's a lot of overlapping, but how much of each ingredient do you put inside of each one really makes a big difference in both of these drinks, and I'll tell you the differences between them. So first of all, let me go back one page. We're going to talk about Tom Bullock's drink first. Inside of his old fashion, he says to use one lump of ice, which I did, and two dashes of Angostura bitters. So this is the classic Angostura aromatic bitters. And I went ahead and I did two dashes of this inside of that drink. One lump of sugar, dissolve it in water. Yes, I did put one uh, tablespoon of water and I dissolved the sugar cube, just one. And I muddled it up. And I mixed it quite well using this in both drinks, mind you. And it says one and a half jiggers of bourbon whiskey. So this is actually quite strong. I filled this up all the way to the top and I poured it in. And then I filled the pony half up to 20 milliliters and I put in another 20 milliliters. So... I would say total, I put 65 milliliters of bourbon whiskey inside of this drink, which means that that's going to be, ooh, it's going to be really intense. And it says to twist a piece of lemon skin over the drink, which I have done. I hope you guys can see that floating around inside of there. And you drop it in, stir well, and serve. So that's that drink. If I back out of this real quick and go to Julian's book, looking at his recipe for the old fashioned cocktail, it says one tablespoonful of sugar. I did one cube, which is exactly the same in both. One tablespoon of water, which is the same in both. Two dashes of Angostura orange bitters, which I have here. This is the orange bitters and this is the aromatic bitters. So this is the first difference between the two. I use aromatic bitters. This is the uh, standard one right here that most bartenders are going to use inside of Tom's drink. And I use the orange bitters inside of Julian's drink. So that is difference number one. But uh, the serving amount of uh, two dashes in both drinks is the same. Let's go ahead and put that down. One piece of lemon peel. The lemon peel is the same inside of both. 
one piece of ice inside of both drinks, which is the same. One jigger of whiskey, which is about 44 milliliters, I put inside of this drink. So it is about 20 milliliters less than what I put inside of Tom's drink. Just according to following the, the recipe. Stir with a spoon and top off with a slice of orange. And I forgot the cherry, so let me go get that real quick. Okay, so this is your one cherry being dropped inside of Julian's drink. So to go over it again, the differences between the two drinks. One, Tom's drink is using the aromatic bitters, whereas Julian's drink is using the orange bitters. Tom's drink has 20 milliliters more bourbon whiskey inside of it than what is found inside of Julian's drink. Tom's drink does not have the orange peel or the cherry, but does have the lemon. And Julian's drink has an additional orange and cherry on top of the lemon that is shared in both drinks. So it seems close enough, these two drinks, but the slight differences may make all the difference in the world. I don't know how it's going to taste, but let's go ahead and try it. We're going to start off with Tom's drink first, since he is the older of the two authors. Mmm. That's pretty intense. Very strong. Yeah, that's a lot more bitter than what I was expecting. Mm. Obviously, being more whiskey inside of here, the intensity is going to be a lot more. And it just tastes a lot more bitter for whatever reason. Still a good drink. If you like things strong, I would definitely say go ahead and have it that way. Let's go ahead and try Julian's drink now. Extremely different. That makes all the difference in the world. The volume of how much of pretty much everything that you put inside the drink is going to make. I say it again, more whiskey means for a stronger drink. This one is more diluted with uh, water, even though I have one ice cube inside of both. But just with this being more whiskey, obviously it's not the same. And having squeezed the orange inside of here as well, it just makes for a more richer, fruitier, sweeter drink. I'm definitely going to have to say that I prefer Julian's drink over Tom's drink. Just have to come right out and say it. I don't want to just hold it to the end of the video and just keep this thing stretched out. Overall, about both of these books and the way that they make their recipes, Tom, the quantity of drink recipes that he has inside of his book is by far way more than anything that you're going to find inside of Julian's drink. I haven't did the math to calculate what percentage of how many more recipes does he have than Julian, but it's notable. It's, it's a lot more. That's all I can say. But out of overlapping drinks that I tried from both books, just Julian's recipe seemed to be more suitable for my palate than in Tom's book. I like very sweet things because I am a sweet guy. So this book tends to cater more to my tongue and to my palate than Tom's book. Not to say that Tom's drinks are bad. If I was to go to a bar and I was served this, I would be happy with it. I would not complain. I would sip it slow and just enjoy it. And I could enjoy it. I do enjoy it. But it must be said that I enjoy this one more. 
So, both books are necessary if you want to get the full spectrum of all these drinks from over 100 years ago. But, let's say you want things stronger, definitely go with Tom's drinks. If you want things more tastier, go with Julian's drinks. That's all I got to say about that. Let me go ahead and finish this off. You know it's customary. I got to pull that cherry out of there, which sobbed up all that nice uh, fruit and whiskey. And mmm. Mmm. You can definitely taste that. So, let me stop snacking in your ears so that I can close out this video. I thank you guys for watching this quick head-to-head -head comparison between these two different drinks made only two years apart. This is 1917 on, the, on my left here and 1919 on the right here. But it is what it is. Anyways, I thank you all for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Yeah, please don't forget to do that. That's quite important. Salute to you wherever you may be out in the world. Make sure that you guys are drinking responsibly. And as always, gentlemen, you guys know what to do. Keep it classy. I need a shot of the good stuff. Someone call Aunt Tomate. Why did you go to the other guy's YouTube channel? Why didn't you come to mine first? We've known each other many years, but this is the first time you've come to me for counsel about drinks. I can't remember the last time you invited me to your house for a dram of whiskey. But let's be frank here. You never wanted my friendship. I understand. You found paradise on YouTube. You watched a few videos. You had a few laughs. So you didn't need to watch a channel like mine. Now you come and say, Don Antamati, give me knowledge about spirits. Give me a drink. But you don't ask with respect. You don't offer friendship. You don't even think to call me Godfather. You come into my house on the day that I am to open the good stuff. And you ask for a shot. What have I ever done to make you treat me so disrespectfully? If you come to me in friendship, we'd be drinking together this very day. And if by some chance an honest man like yourself made enemies, then they would become my enemies. And then they would fear you. You want to be in my favor? I'm going to ask you to do a service for me. Hit the subscribe button. And accept this drink as a gift on my day of relaxation. <laughs>